Hey, it's me, 2D Finn, and welcome to this video where I'm gonna show you exactly how I was created and how I'm doing all of these super smooth movements. It's easier than you think. But wait, that, that means I'm not real. Wait, Finn, Finn, wait, I can explain. Finn, I lied, Finn, no! Let's get on with the tutorial. Now let's begin with part one, which is creating your PNG characters. You're gonna have to excuse me, I have COVID at the moment, so I'm not feeling so good, and you can probably tell. But you know, when life gives you lemons, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> the first thing you're going to want to do is open up Photoshop. Then we're going to create a new file and make sure that that file is set to 1920 by 1080p. That's just going to give you a HD project, which is exactly what we want. So type in a name and click create. Drag and drop some PNGs that you've downloaded. I've got three good ones in my preset pack for you so that you can follow along exactly with what we're doing today. But you know, any old PNG from Google will do the trick. And then you're gonna to wanna to drag on your channel avatar, which should be a square image like this. Then you're gonna select the circle crop tool and drag it from the top left corner down to the bottom right whilst holding shift. This is gonna give you an even circle. When you're done, right click on the layer and then rasterize it. This means that when we press Control, Shift and I to invert and then delete, the background will actually go away. Then we press Control and T and we can pull the face around anywhere we want. But of course, we're gonna put it where the head would be. Disable that background by clicking the eye, and then you'll see it's got the transparent texture. This now means that we should export. When you're exporting, you're going to want to make sure that the format is set to PNG and that you've got transparency selected. Then you're going to hit export and export it to a folder, wherever that is. I have no idea. And then drag those exported PNGs into your Premiere Pro project. Amazing work. Oh, well done. So we're going to split this tutorial into two parts because it's super easy. Uh, one we've already just done, and two is the animation itself, which is basically just keyframes. Now, warning, this can be pretty boring, but you know, it's me, it's Finzar, so I'm gonna try and make it fun. Please bear with me if I go completely off topic for about five whole minutes. Okay. But we'll get, we'll get there, we'll get there together. Hold my hand. Yep. Let's go. Part two. All right, so you're going to want to open Premiere Pro if you haven't already. You already have. Okay. We're going to want to drag our character PNG onto the timeline. And then once we've done that, we're going to go up to Effects and then find the Transform effect and drag that onto our PNG character. And then once we've done that, we're going to want to go in about 12 to 14 frames, as you can see on the left here, and then make a keyframe on the position variable. Go to the beginning of the clip and then drag the character down. Once we've done that, we're going to open up the position velocity settings. When you click on the keyframe itself, a handle should pop out, and then you're going to want to drag them so they look something like this. All right, pit stop. We're going to need to do a little theory lesson on velocity in Premiere Pro, just so that you understand what it means and it will make more sense to you when you're doing your own custom keyframes. So let's imagine we're working with two keyframes. One is position A and the second is position B. The smoothness that we see with animated characters translates directly into the smoothness of this graph. So as you can see, without changing the keyframes, it's just squared off completely. This means that the movement is completely linear and has no easing in or easing out, meaning it's at a constant speed. This is what gives it that non-smooth and harsh look. So when we start to change these keyframes and drag the handles around, we can see that this graph is immediately becoming smoother. To summarize it really quickly for you, the higher that the graph goes, the faster the movement is gonna be. So as you can see, this is gonna be the fastest point. And when we watch the character animation, you can see that there is a spike in speed at that exact point. Now different speeds suit different things within animation, but mostly when you're doing YouTube videos, you're gonna wanna keep it pretty smooth. So just taking away those rough edges that the linear keyframes give you and just making it look smoother. Because if the graph looks smoother, then the animation is gonna look smoother too. It's as simple as that. Okay, great. So now that we're up to date with how velocity works with keyframes, we're gonna come back to our project where your position keyframes should look like this. So now we're gonna add that wiggle effect. You know the one I'm talking about, the one that goes like this. Sweet. Totally. So we're going to go to anchor point, go back a few frames, and then click the first keyframe. On this keyframe, we're going to set this position value to 500. Then we're going to go forward a few frames and add another keyframe, setting that to 540. Then we're going to go forward even more frames and then set a new keyframe at 490. I don't know why I typed 480. Then, you guessed it, we're going to go forward even more frames and then set that to 510. Then scroll through a whole bunch and set another one at 500, essentially going back to that first one. This is what that looks like. It's a bit fast, so I'm just gonna drag those keyframes out a little bit, and I think it's looking a lot better. All right, so now for the bit that everyone finds scary, changing the velocity. Now I find it really simple to do because my style of doing it is to bring every single handle to the bottom and in a tiny bit so that it looks a little bit like a wave. Now for me, that creates a really smooth wiggle effect, as you can see here. And of course, if it's not smooth enough, all you have to do is drag those keyframes out even further than we have already. 
See, it wasn't that hard after all. So now that you've finished it, you can save that as a preset so that you can use it again on future PNGs or characters. Just right click the transform effect on the file itself and then hit save preset. Change the name to something memorable. Big old bouncy wouncy, that sounds about right. And then you're gonna anchor it to the endpoint. This just keeps it all the same size so that it doesn't stretch it out depending on the length of the clip that you put it onto. Click okay and then there it is in your effects library. Are you done? It's so easy, it's so simple. Now, of course, I've already made loads of animation presets ready to go, and I've put it on my online shop for you guys to go and have a look at. We got loads of cool effects. I mean, look at this. I, one of you is gonna use this, I think. So if you're interested, there are over 100 presets on that pack, all animated, custom made. Just head to my link in the description or in the pinned comment. Oh, outro, of course, yeah. Um, thank you for watching this video. I hope you've learned something about animating your own personalized characters. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, fuck it. What will Finzar say next? Will he say A. Get out of here. B. Get out of here. Or C. Get out of here. Uh, leave your answers in the comments. Get out of here. Like